On an unseasonably mild January day in early 1990, the Giants, winners of the NFC East, returned to the playoffs for the first time in three years. Their objective against the LA Rams was to control the ball on offense and contain Jim Everett's highly explosive aerial attack. For the better part of the first half, they succeeded on both counts. Taking a six to nothing lead, however, disaster struck late in the second quarter. A costly turnover led to a Ram touchdown and a subsequent one point LA lead. But as they had done all season long, the Giants fought back. Otis Anderson's third period touchdown culminated an 82 yard scoring drive that pushed the Giants one step closer to the NFC Championship. But the Rams, like the Giants, had no quit in them. For the first time since the 1958 championship, the Giants found themselves in a sudden death playoff. Unfortunately for the men in blue, the ending would be sudden and painfully similar to that historic contest played some 30 years earlier. Everett looking, throws the ball, Steve, he's got a man open, touchdown, and the game is over. It is Anderson with a touchdown, and the Giants do not are out of the playoffs. An eerie, protracted silence descended upon Giants Stadium on that mild January day. It was a sharp contrast to the battle cries of victory that carried from the rafters of Giants Stadium to the playing field of 1989. Here we go, regular people. I'll take Let's go, two slam 19. Let's get this good operation moving. The 1989 Giants were a curious group of overachievers who soared above and beyond what was expected of them. As a team in the midst of swirling personnel changes, the Giants were projected in many quarters to be no better than a 500 team. But a combination of hungry, talented youngsters and reborn veterans gave the Giants a fast start out of the gate in the chase for the NFC Championship. In the end, the Giants amassed 12 victories, the second highest total in the NFL, and secured their second NFC East title over the last four years. The overtime loss in January ended the Giants' dream of Super Bowl glory, but it did not diminish the achievements of a season that was among the finest in their long and illustrious history. In 1989, Bill Parcells sported a trim physique and even a new stylish haircut, symbolic perhaps of the changes his team faced in the new season. It's a team that's in transition. My objective is while you're making this transition, don't let your team slip too far and try to win while you're doing it. The Giants did indeed remain competitive despite numerous shakeups in both starting lineups. Eric Howard took over as full-time nose tackle, while rookie safety Myron Guyton, number 29, stepped in as a starter and played with veteran savvy. In the middle it is, intercepted, taken down by Guyton, the 40, the 35 yard line, Myron Guyton. Newcomer Steve Diossi, number 99, provided power and depth of linebacker, while Sean Landetta's net punting average soared thanks to hustling Plan B acquisition Renee Thompson. He has the ball. Puts it up for the 45. Looks good. It's inside the five. Down to the five yard line. A slew of injuries could have crippled a lesser team. But a group of unsung heroes kept the Giants alive by admirably filling the shoes of sideline starters. 
both Zeke Moad and rookie tight end Howard Cross, number 87, filled in capably for Mark Bavaro. Big John Washington, number 73, was there when Eric Dorsey went down, while the Giants won two straight games with Jeff Hostetler subbing for Phil Sims. Hostetler sets up two men left. Hostetler has the ball. Hostetler throws a loop and deep it is. Complete for a touchdown! Then there was Lawrence Taylor. Seriously injured for the first time in his career, Taylor simply refused to be replaced. More than ever, LT was an inspirational force on a young team looking for leadership. From the regular season closer against the Raiders to the stunning season opener in Washington. Taylor and the defense set the tone on that memorable Monday night and helped to put the ball into the hands of the Giants' revamped offense. Sims in a shotgun now. Sims looking over the middle. He's got a receiver, and it's a first down catch to make it. He's going to break. 20, 25, 30. They got one shot at the 20-yard line, and make it score. The Giants stormed out to a big early lead. Although they stumbled a bit in the fourth quarter, Raul Allegre's last second theatrics gave them a much needed confidence boosting victory. Spotted at the 42 yard line. Set, kick, it's got the distance baby. It's going to be good! It was the beginning of a wild nine week stretch where the Giants amassed eight victories. By finding every conceivable way to win, it was inevitable that comparisons to 1986 were bound to be drawn. I certainly don't have the same feeling I had in 86 because I knew exactly what we could do in 86. This year, it's almost been almost an adventure every week. Much of that adventure was provided by Dave Meggett, number 30. The speedy rookie from Towson State shattered a number of giant punt return records. This fifth round draft pick also proved to be the steal of the draft by displaying versatility as a backfield receiver. Back goes Sims. Sims pumps. He's going for everything. Deep, deep for Meggett. Touchdown if he's in. Yes! While you served, age inspired with Otis Anderson, number 24. This 31-year-old warhorse took over for injured Joe Morris and gave the Giants a power running game that wore down many tough defenses. In a year noted for gray-haired pop stars making triumphant comebacks, OJ was sweet music to the Giants' ears as he rocked and rolled his way to 1,000 yards and 14 touchdowns. With Otis' situation, it's just like James Brown reappearing at the Apollo. I mean, everybody thought he couldn't do it, and uh, he made his comeback. His debut was successful, and uh, from now, the guy's just, he's just steadily rolling along. An important factor in OJ's revival was the offensive line that continued to get bigger, younger, and better. With these youngsters still maturing and with Phil Sims hampered by a sore ankle, the Giants put less emphasis on the passing game. But their fine trio of third-year receivers continued to demonstrate explosive game-breaking abilities. Seeker with motion to the right side, Sims has the ball. Sims in trouble, throws! Complete to Baker, gets away from the tackle. Sims looking long, throws long, he's got a man, complete 10-5, and he scores, Ingram! 
Stephen Baker, Mark Ingram, and the Giants reception leader, Odessa Turner, possessed the kind of gift of grab that was also apparent in the improved secondary of Guyton, Williams, Collins, and Kennard. Hold the looking to his left, has time, throws over the middle, it is intercepted, Kennard has the ball, Kennard along the 50, goes to the 45, to the 40, 35, 30, Kennard to the 25, 20, Kennard's going to go! In 1989, the Giants' defense, while less physical than its recent predecessors, was certainly more opportunistic. This was a key factor in two important come-from-behind triumphs over the Redskins and Vikings in October. That's a way to play, baby! Need another turnover! Play hard! He's looking to his right, Rippin, throws over the middle, he's got his man, Clark at the 50-yard, fumble! Giants might have it! Yes! Come on, baby, let's go! Come on, baby, let's go! Baker from motion left, reverses right, Sims has the ball, he throws! Touchdown on Death of Carter! Kramer has the ball. Kramer, rush. They throw, and it is intercepted. Pepper Johnson. Pepper to the 30. 25 20. Pepper to the 15. Pepper might score. Kickoff is high. Waters a bit. It's going to come inside the five. Anderson's got it at the three. Five, ten, fifteen. Bam! What a tackle. Three ball. Giants have it at the ten. Lewis Tillman made the hit. Against Minnesota, Leonard Marshall and Lawrence Taylor led the Giants' most ferocious pass rush of the season while Jeff Hostetler and Lionel Manuel picked up an offense that was minus Phil Sims. Eight weeks into the season of transition, the Giants found themselves at 7-1 and one and all alone atop the tough NFC East. All right, returner. With many player changes, continuity was provided by the largely unchanged Giant coaching staff. Penalties, all right? No penalties, and we're going to go return 237. On the ride 35, when we ran on a quick hit. Oh, there's, uh, yeah. there's a sand out here, we base that out, right? I know, but the, the end's here. He hit it down in there. Look, it's going to be the same thing to the open side now on third down. You're going to get a guy in the flat, and then two guys crisscrossing, you know, however they match the thing up. I mean, going to a backside tight end ought to be your tip off. While Giant coaches worked harder than ever, no man was more dedicated to keeping his team on their toes than Bill Parcell. You cannot get pushed out in the low. Are you good? I don't think I got pushed out. Just keep burrowing in the middle, okay? And don't worry about any of the Indeed, Parcell's highly personal style of coaching was turned up a notch higher in 1989. Come on, Greg! Yeah! That's what loses games right there, that kind of play. It was just a question of maybe myself being a little bit more vocal, being a little bit more communicative to these new players here, so they, they started to get an impression of Bill Parcells. You like football, Renee? Oh, yeah. This is it right here. A jumbo, I don't want you to get nervous because that's that's not Michigan State down there. That's Philadelphia, okay, kid? Not Michigan State. I know if it was, you'd be real nervous. There are a lot of coaches out there that don't want that relationship to say, listen, I can't afford to get attached to a player on a personal basis. But Bill is just the opposite. He feels that the better he gets to know a player, the more he can get from that player and the more dedicated that player will be towards him. And he's going to score! Oh, bank, bank! For you, is it? No. Hey, fellas, this is what you work all offseason for. This is why you lift all them weights. This is why you do all that. Split backs for the Giants. Fast handoff to Anderson. Anderson gets through the line this time. Across the 30, 25, 20. He'll go down to the 10. He's at the 5. He'll score. Not good at scoring. Hey, I 
show speed. I, I got smart. Made 20. I got smart. I could have made 20. Nah, here comes. That's the way to go, baby. That's it, bitch. That a boy, Lenny. That a boy, Matt. It's often been said that the mark of a good coach is not how he reacts to victory, but how he overcomes adversity in defeat. In a crucial Monday night encounter at Candlestick Park, Bill Parcells faced such a test. Down by 14 at halftime with his star linebacker finished for the night, Parcells patiently watched his team tie the 49ers. Sims has the ball. Sims throws, completes to the left side, Megan out of the backfield, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, he'll score! In one of the most dramatic nationally televised games of 1989, Phil Sims led the Giants in a gritty comeback that stunned the powerful Super Bowl champions. Cloud making it tough. Fourth down play for the Giants. Trailing by a touchdown and point. Sims throws. He's got a man. Touchdown! But this heroic endeavor came to a crushing halt when Mike Kofer got a second chance to kick a game-winning field goal. If the heartbreaking loss in San Francisco was simply a bad dream, what followed one week later against Philadelphia was a downright nightmare. The Giants lost their firm grip on first place in a turnover-filled game and seemed to be fading as the season stretch run began. Hey, fellas, this is what you want World Cup season for. This is why you live all that way. This is how you do all that. This is what you want World Cup season for. This is why you live all that way. This is what you want World Cup season for. You keep telling the players you're going to be judged by who's standing at the end, not by some loss the ninth or tenth week of the season that that the press is making a big deal of, and if you just persevere and keep going, maybe you, you beat somebody you shouldn't beat, and all of a sudden you're back in, in the race. Sims drops back to the 30, throws a release to Megan, he's got the ball, and the bobbling, good run! Across midfield, 45 yard line, he might make it! He's down to the 35, 25, he's going to go in! Even in the best of conditions, Denver's Mile High Stadium is a most inhospitable place. But it was this unlikely site where the Giants heeded the words of their coach and turned their fortunes around. Gary Reasons, playing the game of his career, led a defense that held off a Broncos second half assault by turning in one of the greatest goal line stands in Giants history. Crowd to be quiet. He's having trouble having his men hear the signals. Fourth down at the goal line. About a foot to go. Elway. Hands off. They dive. Stopped. The Giants broke through. Gary Reasons. Great play by Gary Reasons. Reading it, he came from about three yards into the end zone, threw his body right at Humphrey, and crumbled him. What a job. What a game. One week later, another all-out goal line stand, this time led by co-captain Carl Banks, secured the Giants' second straight victory. Well, they're sure going to go for it. Aikman, hands off, Palmer's gonna turn the corner, they got him! Carl Banks! Boy, give him credit. What a defensive stand, and they've done it. Game in and game out. With one week remaining in the season, the Giants were on the verge of clinching an NFC East crown that even they thought might have been an impossible dream when the 1989 season began. Wind is coming out of the west at about 12 miles an hour. Wind chill factor is down to 10 degrees below zero and it is a great day for football. Good afternoon, Jim Gordon along with Dick Lynch and Carl Nelson and the gang and the most important game of the year for the Giants. All right, we're going to return it to the ball offset. Contact, be aggressive, and let's make it happen. Hey! Megan waiting for the ball at the Giants 33-yard line. 
Jager gets it in the air. It's a good kick. It's carrying deep. Megan backs inside the 25. Cross to the 30 going left. A lose a tackle, 35. Gets down to the 40 yard line. He's free to the 45. He's at the 50. 45. He's at the 40. He might go. He's going to make it all the way. Runs back for a touchdown. And it goes to Wreckin. First time to 72. It goes to Wreckin. He's going to pass the ball if he's given a chance. He's throwing deep it is. Complete at the 10-yard line. Oh, a cross. OJ the trailing back. They go to OJ. OJ at the goal line. Touchdown. Sims drops back. Sims is high. Rolls long. And zone. It goes to Bo at the goal line. Lakes to O.J. Sims running right. He's going to run. He's going to go in. Touchdown. Burline looking. There's nobody open. Now he finds somebody. Intercepted. I'm really pleased for these guys. They've worked hard. You know, we were picked third to, in this division in preseason. We're an 8-8 eight and eight team. We're in transition. I hear everybody talking, you know, this and that, and this and that, but, you know, we're, we're, we got 12 wins. You know, and I'll take that every year in this league and, and take my chances. Hey, Giants fans, Saquon Barkley here. You want to see more videos? Subscribe below.